My weekly summary of the Neolithic and Bronze Age news is late once again. I've got a lot going on at this end, so my routine is all over the place. Anyway, let's get going and see what's been happening. Number one, early Bronze Age houses found at Panaz Tepe in Turkey. Archaeological excavations at Panaz Tepe in the Izmir province of Turkey have revealed 5,000 year old houses and pottery. These are the earliest remains and finds from the city. Panas Tepe is a multi-period site that was in use right up until the Byzantine period. Although it is located around 10 kilometers from the coast, in the early Bronze Age, it's thought that it was an island with a port. This is based on geographical surveys, ancient fishing weights found at the site, and certain types of ceramic remains. It appears that Panas Tepe was an important city in ancient times sitting as it did between several significant civilizations such as the Mycenaean and Hittite cultures. Number two, mercury poisoning found in Copper Age skeletons. A team of researchers recently published a paper in the International Journal of Osteoarchaeology analyzing levels of cinnabar in prehistoric and classical period skeletons. The research brought together biologists, chemists, physical anthropologists and archaeologists to study 370 skeletons from 50 tombs in archaeological sites across Spain and Portugal. In the paper entitled The Use and Abuse of Cinnabar in Late Neolithic and Copper Age Iberia, specialists reveal that cinnabar, a mercury sulfide mineral, was found in the highest concentrations during the Copper Age. At that time, cinnabar was used in powder form for decorative and ritual purposes due to its bright red color. The research suggests that Copper Age individuals were exposed to it passively due to its widespread use, but also ingested it deliberately for ritual reasons. Number three, Neolithic pits near Stonehenge, not natural features after all. The Guardian reports that Neolithic pits found in 2020, referred to as the Durrington Shafts, have been found to be man-made and date 2400 BCE. There are 20 pits in total and nine have been investigated scientifically. Each shaft is 10 metres wide and 5 metres deep and they form part of a circle surrounding the Durrington Walls Monument and are located almost one kilometre from it. The circle is around two kilometers northeast of Stonehenge and 20 times the size of it. The pits were used up until the Middle Bronze Age. It's not known what they were used for, but it's likely they were of ritual significance to the builders of nearby Stonehenge. Number four, study finds climate change led to the collapse of the Lingzhou culture. The 5,300 year old Lingzhou culture in Eastern China was a sophisticated Neolithic civilization with a complex water management system, including hydraulic engineering, canals, dams, and reservoirs. The archaeological remains are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Until now, what led to the collapse of the Langzhou culture has been a mystery. A team of researchers analyzing cave deposits close to the archaeological site has concluded that climate change was to blame for the abandonment of the area. After 1,000 years of occupation, severe monsoon rains inundated the land for around 300 years on and off. Even with advanced dams and engineering, it's likely that flooding caused by the rains was too harsh for the Lingzhou culture to manage in the long term. This is the most likely reason why they left the settlement. Number five, Karahan Tepe was built before the advent of agriculture. Ongoing excavations at Karahan Tepe in Turkey have changed the long-held view that settlements were created only after hunter-gatherers discovered agriculture and animal husbandry. The 11,400-year-old site features a domestic village alongside a monumental ritual complex, but shows no evidence of farming. It is it is proof that complex settlements catering to everyday needs as well as more spiritual concerns arose when hunting and gathering were still the primary means of obtaining food. Experts now think that agriculture was the result of a settled domestic life rather than the cause. Only 1% of Karahantepe has been excavated so far 
and is part of a vast network of Neolithic settlements with ritualistic attributes covering 100 kilometers. It was built around 200 years after the famous Gobekli Tepe. Number six, experts trace origin of Trans-Eurasian languages. Hundreds of millions of people across more than 8,000 kilometers speak what are classed as Trans-Eurasian languages, including modern Japanese, Korean, and Turkish. Research led by comparative linguist Martine Rabitz sought to find the origin of these languages using linguistics, genetics, and archaeology. The results of this study were published in the journal Nature and conclude that the languages can be traced back to millet farmers inhabiting the Lao River Valley in China and Mongolia 9,000 years ago. The interdisciplinary approach analyzed the vocabulary of 98 languages, evidence from 255 archaeological sites, and the genomes of 23 ancient skeletons. Number seven, metal detectorist uncovers two Bronze Age hordes in Cambridgeshire. A 13-year-old discovered two Bronze Age hordes near Royston in Cambridgeshire while searching with her dad and his metal detecting group. The finds date to 1300 BCE and include copper alloy axe heads, cake ingots and blade fragments. Initially, 20 items were unearthed before the site was referred to professional archaeologists who found around 200 objects in total. Although the hordes were discovered in September, information has only just been released on them and an investigation into the objects is ongoing. Number eight, researchers analyzed population change in Bronze Age Iberia. In 2500 BC, a thriving population in the Iberian Peninsula was building large settlements fortifications, and funerary monuments. Towards the end of the third millennium, many sites were abandoned, and experts haven't been clear why. Researchers have now analysed the genomes of 136 people from 3000 to 1500 BCE to see what this tells us about population movements during the transition from the Copper to the Bronze Age. They found that the El Agar culture that emerged during the Bronze Age had steppe-related ancestry, whereas the previous Copper Age population did not. Thanks for listening. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more news and my regular videos. Follow me on Instagram for more content and take a look at my website for details about the places I visit.